What? Oh, you know, half inch lock washers for some reason. I, I have, I am so disorganized sometimes. I should just clean the shop. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, cool. I think these are five eighths, but they're, no, these are five ones. I got them. I got them. See, I know where they were. <laughs> My problem is that these things get beat up because they are on the uh, color multer and it needs to, uh, I should have chased them I, I guess, but I wanted to put new ones on just for the fun of it. So, let's day we do this. Uh, where's that never sees? Do you know where that never sees disappeared to? You can use Carl's Grease. Yeah, we'll use Carl's Grease. Where the hell is that? That disappeared too. I know, I was yeah. looking for that the other day and I didn't see it. Yeah. Well, go find it. Well, it's over there. Well, it's not over there. Well, I mean the rest of them. What sure in hell not over here? Full of dirt. Are you recording me by any chance? Yes, I'm recording you. Hmm. Okay. You probably wonder why I'm putting grease and then a lock washer. Well, this is a graphite based grease, some stuff that Carl had came up with a few years ago. And uh, it works okay, but I guess that sprayer must have not been working crap properly, huh? No. That's one of those elusive problems, you know. You just don't know it's not functioning correctly until you fix it and then it's like, oh, or find it. And then you're like, wow, that's the whole problem. Mm -hmm. Sucking air. What it was doing. Let's see, can we get this thing to start properly? Yes, we did. All right, so let's pretend. We're going to have to get the 5020 out of here. We're going to put that on the call motor, I guess. Right. Okay. Yeah, 4430 is gut axle problem. Oh. Needs new axle bearings, remember? Yeah. Okay. Right. Not the 720. I ain't gonna play around with that old thing. What do you mean? You're gonna sit around and I don't have that kind of time. We got rain showers coming this afternoon. Alright, so before we do that, I want to make sure that all these pieces actually fit on here. and it does and it does the core all right so we can leave that there that is okay there now we got to figure out how we're going to get those off of there and before we do that we're going to make sure that this pipe is the right one because there was two kinds there was a 70 some odd inch one there's a, a 76 incher and a 74 incher Right? Yeah. Why did that not seem like it's longer though? Why does that not seem as though it's long enough? Because one it's stretched out? No. There's no such thing as a stretched out one. If he sent me the wrong goddamn one, he sent me the wrong one. No, he didn't. Or did he? He did. Did he? Or did he not? Because if he did, I'm going to be <laughs> God damn it! Huh? That does look shorter. It is. He sent me the wrong one. They fucking sent me the wrong one. Go pick up Carla. Wrong one. Okay, something? good morning. Well, anyways, it is morning, yes. Um, shoot, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to hit that. But anyways, uh, what you're watching <coughs> is me repair the tube that goes through the center of these rollers. Uh, the, the, the <laughs> what had happened was it... I'm not even sure what happened, why that was caused to do what it did, but it, it, it actually hogged out the center of the, uh, there's a bushing where the bearings go, and it loosened up enough to hog it out to the point where it, you know, flopped around and wore out, and then the end of this 
pipe, basically it's a pipe, a machined pipe that receives the uh, bearing housing or bearing bushing. That goes in there. Now, when it hogged it all out, of course, it spread it out and it wouldn't fit. So I decided that I would buy that brand new piece of, you know, that center shaft. Um, but I got my model number wrong. And you'll see that here at the end. But uh, I got my model number wrong and it was just too short. So I called up John Deere and I'm like, hey, listen, I got a problem. I bought this thing and obviously they know me pretty well up there. So they're like, okay, well, um, what model number? Are you sure you had the right model number? I said, no, I, 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 I'm not sure because it's not there. Um, I just figured that it was that particular one because I figured it was that particular one. Um, I may have the book downstairs in my house. I don't know, but I'm going to go look for it after I'm done posting this video. Um, but anyways, the uh, they called Brilliant. Brilliant called them and said, hey, listen, he, he's giving you the wrong number. If that's the measurement, he actually has the wrong number. So um, he needs this one. So, of course, that pipe with the bearing ends in it is like... Um, I don't know what the hell did they tell me it was at least, at least like 500 bucks. I know it is at least the one that I bought that was wrong was just under 500, uh, $400, just under $400. So I'm expecting this one to come in because it is like eight inches longer. Or so 10 inches longer, it is going to be a, uh, somewhere around $400, you know, maybe a little bit more. Um, but anyways, I, I did, I did get that thing shrunk down on there. See, when you put that kind of heat to a pipe and then you tap it on, you know, and I actually forge welded a little bit on the ends. There were some cracks, and it, when I tapped it over, it overlapped, and I smacked it on, and it looked like it went right back together. Um, so I left that insert in there after it cooled off, and that was, uh, that was perfect because when it cooled off, it snug down good and tight against that bushing now i don't think it's going to last but like i said well like i say later in this video that i'm not going to be using this thing for very much i mean it's just going to be a uh <clears throat> it's just going to be let's get this 25 acres done today and maybe in a year or two i'll get another 25 or 50 acres or whatever and it's, it's not something that i rely on uh every day in my operation or it would have I would have just, you know, I don't know. I did what I had to do to get the job done. Let's put it that way. Uh, I did order the new pipe, and when that comes in, then I'm going to take this one back. Now, as you see what I'm doing here is I'm actually putting the clamp on, and or the tightener clamp. Now, that tightener clamp has actually fit perfect over top of the new bushing that I put in there and the end of the pipe and I made that thing super tight so that should actually hold that bushing solid against the pipe so that it doesn't move I don't want it to move but it should be solid against that pipe and uh, keep it from actually uh, doing the same thing at least for the for the time being but anyways uh, there's gonna be a little bit of uh, footage coming in here and then I'm gonna talk again at the end Okay, so I'm gonna explain a little bit about this I have ordered the wrong parts uh, not that I did it on purpose or anything and you know it's not the parts man's fault it's my fault I don't know what model number this thing is I didn't buy it new uh, and it's supposed to have a model plate right there but it's not there. So they were probably stickers at one time back in the 60s or early early 60s, late 60s. I don't think this is any newer than that. As you can see, the teeth have next to no wear on them. This thing doesn't have many hours on it. It does have a crack right there that needs to be addressed, but it's normal for these things to break like that. It is a brilliant, obviously. Oh, so, anyway, the shaft that I purchased was too short. Uh, it needed to be 80 and a quarter inches overall length versus the 76 and some odd inches overall length. So whatever. So as you see, what I did was I I uh, actually heated up, heated it up good and hot, went all the way around it. It actually pressed firm against the new collar that I put in there and the new insert bushing that went in there now I'm not going to work with this thing you know 
every day for the next 10 years you know I just just need I need to get over 25 acres today that's it and then it'll sit for another couple of years <laughs> you know that's just the way these things go uh, yeah I enjoy this very much I mean this has been a very good color mulcher for what I paid for it I think I paid $800 for it that's all I got more in the parts that I just purchased than I do in the whole machine so you know how can I go wrong right put a put a a, basically a thousand dollars into it and go plant a crop of hay that's going to yield me tens of thousands of dollars over the course of the next few years so that's how that's going to work anyway with that being said me and mr tomato paste are going to go ahead and put this in there i got to turn it because that end is the end that goes down there i've got the new piece i used it to center it i don't know what he did with it what'd you do with that thing Okay, so now we just got to turn it. I've put a block of wood there, as you can see, to stop the roller from just going right straight to the wheels. Because it is on a slight hill there. And, of course, it pushed the block of wood out of the way. I have turned the... Obviously, you can see that I've turned it so that it would fit in there. Of course, I get my grizzly bear son, Timothy, here to, to uh, you know, help me out. Because that damn thing is heavy. We go through the instructions and I, you know, as to how this is going to have to go in here... Um, I went and I grabbed a couple of V-belts to put around it at, to pick it up. Old ones, you know, something that had came off of the, I think they actually came off the 44 or 50. Um, but, hey, we proceeded to snap them. So, I sent Tim for a uh, chain. And uh, that chain was the wrong size, obviously, because it just would not fit under there. So we fiddle and we fart and we finally get what we need and, and before you know it, you, know, you see me lift it up like that. I made sure he didn't stick his hands under there to get him pinched and, uh, you know, because that thing is heavy. I mean, that thing is really heavy. Uh, I don't know what that roller weighs, but when it broke off of the machine, um, this has been a couple of years ago now, uh, when it broke off of the machine, Timothy went out with the uh, 4230. And he picked that thing up and got it onto the back of that color mulcher. Don't ask me how he did it. I mean, it's it's easy enough to get it on. Well, it's not easy. It's heavy. Uh, so what you do is you get it aligned on that little uh, that little square gizmo, and then you 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 just kind of finagle it with another uh, with an, with the pry bar to get it where it belongs. And you know, it's not difficult to do. It's just you got to use your brain. That's all there is to it. You got to use your brain. It's, it's because things are heavy. You can pinch your fingers, toes, arm, leg. I always said that you know accidents happen when you're not paying attention. Well, that's exactly what happens when you're not paying attention. And there I'm on the phone to John Deere over that thing, and we realized that I actually oh we got ass crack. So everybody start commenting about Tim's ass crack. You know that's a that's a very offensive thing sometimes, but it's called life. Get over it. You've got an ass crack if you're complaining. I don't know a human being with the exception of one woman that I saw up on top of a uh, hotel room, a ho not a hotel room, but a hotel. There was a swimming pool up there. That woman had absolutely 100% no ass. There was no ass, no bump, no bulge, no crack, no nothing. She was in a bathing suit, and I can tell you right now, that bathing suit revealed that there was nothing there. But Timothy has an ass crack. But anyhow, what I'm doing here is actually straightening out the scrapers because I didn't do it before I put it on, which made a little bit of, you know, made for a little bit of difficulty. There's, uh, you know, getting them straight. Some of the beat on them too, got them down where they belonged. And the scrapers are very important because if you don't have them and you get into a little damp situation, the front rollers generally don't plug up um, because the the dry crust on the top you know, on the on the, the initial rollover uh, keeps it from packing in there. And then when you go through the teeth, if you're putting a teeth down, uh, that churns it up. And if there's enough moisture there, they'll stick. And you really should have the scrapers in there. So, I don't know. I think we're pretty much done. So, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Uh, tomorrow, you're going to see the 5020 get hooked up to this thing. We did have a few problems with the 5020, but... I got them straightened out, and life is good. So as you can see, we cleaned up our mess before we went to work. So thanks again, everyone, and I'll see you on the next one.